Good day to everyone. My name is Dr. Jerry O'Neill, and I'm being brought to you for a few medical moments by Dallas Live tonight. If you like this program or you like this series of programs, please subscribe, hit that button below. Today's topic is going to be one that's going to affect a large number of people. That is hair loss. Hair loss, also known medically as alopecia, is something that will affect almost everyone and certainly people who live into their 60s, 70s, and 80s will experience some degree of hair loss. There are four main categories of causes for hair loss. The first and most common is just natural hair loss. That occurs as a result of aging, heredity, and hormonal changes. If you live into your 70s and beyond, you will suffer some hair loss. Men most frequently in what's called male pattern baldness, that is on the sides, the widow's peak, if you will, and in the back. This can be mild, moderate, or complete. Interestingly enough, the hair on the sides of the head almost never completely fall out. No one's quite sure why that happens, but it's true. The second is emotional stress. Emotional stress, especially along with natural causes, can accelerate hair loss. And therefore, people under a great deal of emotional stress, be it grief or emotional illnesses, perhaps should consult their physician uh, as to the cause and perhaps the treatment. The second most common cause of hair loss is medications. Medications usually either prescribed by your doctor or over the counter. The most frequently involved is, are the medications classified as retinoids. Retinoids are used to treat acne. They're usually in the form of a cream uh, that affects the skin in such that it becomes a more uh, resistant to acne can also cause hair loss, and it's not terribly uncommon. Therefore, if you're using retinoids, uh, the most common example of which is Retin-A, uh, and you experience loss of hair from your head, perhaps you need to speak to your physician about this. The second is, is beta blockers. Beta blockers are very common drugs. They're used to control blood pressure. They're used to treat migraine headaches. Uh, and they are also used in heart failure and a variety of cardiovascular uh, uh, illnesses. Beta blockers primarily slow down the heart rate and reduce cardiac work, if you will. But a side effect is that they can cause hair loss and accelerate hair loss in people who are losing it for other reasons. If you're taking a beta blocker for whatever reason and you experience either increased amounts of hair loss or a new onset hair loss for no apparent reason, you might consult your physician. The next are calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers, like beta blockers, are also taken usually for cardiovascular problems such as high blood pressure and or heart conditions. These can cause hair loss, not as often as beta blockers, but certainly often enough that your physician will be aware of it. And if you mention it, he may be able to change you to a medication that doesn't cause the problem. Antidepressants. People who are depressed take antidepressants. Antidepressants, especially serotonin reuptake inhibitors, uh, can cause hair loss. Uh, if you're uncertain, if you're taking a beta, if you're taking, excuse me, if you're taking an antidepressant and you suddenly experience an increase or the onset of hair loss, uh, you might look it up, uh, make sure that you're taking a real antidepressant of whatever kind, and again, consult your physician. Lastly, and most, and commonly, is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These are many available over the counter without prescription. Some are still prescription. The most common is ibuprofen. The next most common is naproxic acid or naproxen. 
These drugs in some people can cause or accelerate hair loss. Again, if you experience hair loss or accelerated hair loss with these medications, perhaps you should discuss it with your physician and there may be better ways to control uh, whatever you were treating with something other than the offending drug. The third cause of hair loss is generalized illnesses and the effects or treatments of other illnesses. Chief among these is hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is likely more common than even physicians suspect. That is a low thyroid function. Low thyroid function can facilitate weight gain. Uh, it can cause mental slowness, interfere with your sleep, and a variety of other things, but it's also very well known to cause hair loss. In this case, the proper diagnosis and if necessary, the replacement of thyroid hormone uh, will result in cessation of the hair loss, or that is you'll regain your hair. The second, of course, everyone knows chemotherapy and some forms of radiation uh, will cause hair loss. People with cancer are well aware of this. Generally, chemotherapies target rapidly dividing or rapidly growing cells, of which unfortunately the hairs are part of that, and hair loss is very common. Although, again, once the treatment is stopped, the hair usually regrows. The next is autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases like lupus erythematosus are associated with widespread hair loss, not only on the head, but also the body. If you have lupus and you experience hair loss, again, consult your doctors. There may be something that can be done about it to keep you from losing your hair. And finally, scalp infections, <clears throat> either with fungi, uh, otherwise known as ringworm, or tinea capitis is the actual correct term for it, uh, can cause hair loss. Many schools still, sc still screen their children for ringworm or a fungus that affects the head. This is very easily treated with cream uh, preparations and some forms of shampoos. And finally, there are bacterial infections uh, that can spread under the skin and cause hair loss. This is a bit unusual, but it does happen. And again, if it's associated with pain, itching, or bleeding, one should consult your family physician. Finally, there's a category known as alopecia areata. Alopecia areata is a very odd, not rare, but somewhat unusual condition where large chunks of hair fall out and in no particular pattern. It can be from the side of the head, it can be from the top of the head, it can be both. It can cause complete baldness, it can cause loss of your eyebrows, uh, and a variety of other things. In the past, a lot of medical opinion has centered around psychiatric conditions. Now there's no question that people that lose their hair in patches, especially young people, will have some sort of psychiatric condition if not a cause of the problem, the problem will cause that. Uh, it seems lately that there's more interest in this being an autoimmune disease that can possibly be treated by various methods. And again, a physician should be consulted uh, if you develop widespread or noticeable loss of hair in strange areas like chunks of hair falling out or coming out every time you shower and eventually leaving you essentially with patchy hair in various places. That brings us to the treatment of hair loss. There are a number of treatments advocated for hair loss. Some are effective, some not so much. The most common treatment that's available to all of us over the counter is minoxidil. Minoxidil was invented in the 1970s and was originally marketed as a most effective blood pressure medication. It was during that time, however, that, that physicians using this medication or carrying out tests would notice 
that it would grow hair. In fact, it even limits the use of the drug as a blood pressure agent because it will cause women to grow hair in places that they don't want hair. Women can develop mustaches and even beards if treated with enough minoxidil. This phenomenon was not lost on the company that makes minoxidil, and they soon realized that they not only had on their hands a decent blood pressure medication, but they had something that would regrow hair. That resulted initially in prescription preparations that were rubbed into the scalp. They're now non-prescription as the patents have expired, and you can buy all sorts of brands of medications that contain minoxidil. If used daily, minoxidil will cause hair restoration, and that is hair will grow back. The chief disadvantage of minoxidil is number one, the price, number two, that it has to be used almost daily, and number three, if you discontinue its use, the hair will fall out. Next, there's finasteride, also marketed as Propecia. Now, this is a hormonally active agent, and what it does is, it recogn it, the recognition is that everyone makes testosterone, even women, although in smaller amounts than men. The conversion in your body of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone through an enzymatic pathway uh, results in a dimming down, if you will, of hair growth and a reduction in the size of the hair follicles, which results in thinning or loss of the hair. Uh, the drug can be used by men and for women. It does work, but again, if you stop taking it, the effect is lost. Uh, finally, we should treat any infection that may be present, that is, if you have ringworm, which is a form of fungal disease. Uh, it's well treated with topical solutions and creams, and it does work. Also, if there's strong emotional illnesses associated with hair loss, again, it's controversial as whether or not this is a cause or an effect, but nonetheless, the emotional problem should be attended to professionally. Finally, if you have hair loss associated with chemotherapy or radiation, be aware that once that treatment is discontinued, your hair should regrow. Finally, there are numerous, uh, more than numerous, ads in magazines and on the internet for varieties of shampoos, concoctions, oils, herbs, spices, and that sort of thing that are supposed, supposed to grow hair if used according to the manufacturer. Most of these lack any scientific proof, and frankly, the formulas resemble more salad dressing than they do something to grow hair. On the other hand, they're generally totally harmless, and if you feel like you'd like to give it a try, by all means, do it. I would say if you're gonna give it a try, try it for at least a month or six weeks. If you don't see any change in that period of time, it's probably not working. And finally, the ultimate solution to hair loss is hair transplantation. Hair transplantation has been around for 30 to 40 years at this point. Initially, it was done in groups of hairs and the people that had it done looked uh, a little odd for a while, although the hair grew in. The hair is taken from the back of the neck, uh, where there's usually plenty of hair, and it's transplanted to whatever area you need hair, be it the sides or the front. Hair transplantation has improved. It's done now in a microscopic manner, essentially one hair follicle at a time, and it works and works very well. It, by the way, is a permanent treatment. Once you have the hair, usually it'll continue to grow. Uh, perhaps if you live another 20 or 30 years, you may suffer some natural hair loss, as you would anyway, but hair transplants do work. 
The biggest drawback to hair transplants is number one, the cost, and number two, you'll probably have to have numerous sessions. But if you're so inclined, by all means, there are ads on television, ads in magazines and on the internet about hair transplant uh, and its effect. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you have a full head of hair and are able to keep it for most of your life. Have a good day. Subscribe to this channel if you like this program. I thank the people at Dallas Live tonight and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.